In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at uh, the normal approximation or normal approximations to some discrete random variables, specifically the binomial hypergeometric. And as a little prelude into this idea, uh, we're going to start with uh, binomial first. Uh, these are the histograms for tossing 5 fair coins, 10 fair coins, 20 fair coins. And so notice even for 5, it's a very symmetrical about some middle value. Uh, the 10 is even more so. It certainly looks very, very bell-shaped like a normal curve, and even more so the 20. In fact, uh, we can draw a very nice shaped curve that looks very bell-shaped, very much like a normal. And so we should be able to approximate um, probabilities here uh, with this the normal curve because it has the same kind of shape. See, the problem with the binomial, for example, is if the number of trials gets very large, like tossing a coin like 500 or 1,000 times, then it can be very cumbersome to calculate very many probabilities. Like if you if you threw a coin 1,000 times and you wanted to calculate the probability of between, let's say, 300 and 400 heads, well, that's an awful lot of combinations. So it would take, you could do it, but it would take you a long time to do the calculation by hand. So hence, we have this normal approximation. And if you flip over to the second page here, and here's the tossing 20 coins graph duplicated again. And then the top right hand corner is the question, when can you approximate the binomial distribution with the normal? And there's a test, and there's one for the hypergeometric, we'll get into that too later on. And if NP is greater than 5 and NQ is greater than 5, that's the test. That tells you whether it's okay or not. And so in this one here, N is 20, and if it's a fair coin, then P would be 0.5. So um, NP would be 20 times 25, which is 10, and that's certainly greater than 5, so we're okay. And NQ would be the same thing if it's a fair coin, because if P is 0.5, Q would be 0.5, so it's also 10, greater than 5, we're good. Now, there's something called the continuity correction, and we'll get into that a little bit here, but more I'll show you how it works with the ex in the first example in the next page. The um, All the bars, like for example, that number there, that's 10 on the horizontal axis. That's 15, that's 13, that's 6 right there in the middle of the bar. And every bar extends from 0.5 below to 0.5 above that middle number. You see every bar has a width of 1, so 0.5 plus 0.5 would give you 1. And um, so this bar at 10 here, it extends from, see that point would actually be 9.5, and that point there would be 10.5. So if we want the, uh, the area of that bar, it actually goes from 9.5 to 10.5. And if you remember what you did, if you did uh, any normal probability calculations, if you want between, then you need to find the z-score of the bottom part of the interval and the top part of the interval and find the probability between. So that's that's this idea of this continuity correction. You see, we need this continuity correction because we're approximating a discrete random variable that can only have whole number values with a continuous one that can have any decimal parts you want. So you see, normally you can't have 9.5 heads or 10.5 heads, but this is how you actually are able to do the, the approximation with the normal. Now, for the binomial, the mean is NP. It's the expected value, actually. And the, the standard deviation is the square root of NPQ. And we'll, I'll show you how to use those in the example in the next page. So in example one, it says, find the probability of getting 23 heads using a normal approximation if 50 coins are tossed. So, here's the uh, uh, mean uh, calculation. Uh, the mean is NP. And so we are tossing 50 coins. So 50 times, and if it's a fair coin, we're assuming it is, P would be 0.5. So 50 times 0.5 is 25. And back to the test for just a second, that's certainly larger than 5, so we're okay. I didn't bother to write the NQ here because, you see, Q is also 0.5, so NQ is also 25. So they're both bigger than 5 by quite a bit, so the approximation is okay to use. Now, we need the standard deviation. So the standard deviation is the root of NPQ, and of course uh, N is 50, and P and Q are both 0.5. So 50 times 0.5 times 0.5 is 12.5, so the square root of that is 3.54 approximately. So that's our standard deviation when we're going to find some z-scores. Now, I didn't put a diagram on this page, but I'll make a little diagram here. And on the next pages, there will be ones. So let's say that we have this. So we want, we're calculating the probability of 23 heads. 
So let's say this is the bar above 23. We'll make a nice big fat one. Okay, so that's the bottom of the bar. That's the top of the bar. You see this point right here would be 22.5, a half below 23. And this one here would be 23.5. And see, we want, we're finding this probability, the area basically uh, of that interval. And uh, so we need to find the z-score of 22.5 and the z-score of 23.5 in order to find these probabilities. So let's do the 22.5 here. 22.5 minus uh, the means 25, standard deviation is 3.54, which is negative 0.71. And then we also need to do the 23.5 as well, which works out to be negative 0.43. Now I'm gonna get rid of my uh, diagram here so I can finish the example here. So, we're trying to find the probability it's between this and this because remember this is the bottom of that interval this is the top so we're between those two values that's why I find the probability z score is between those two numbers so we would find the probability z is less than negative 0.43 and subtract from that the probability that z is less than negative 0.71 because we're doing between so uh, negative 0.71 uh, z score is probability is 0.2389 and the negative 0.43 is 0.3336. So those are the probabilities from the z score table that we're subtracting. And so we get 0 0.0947, so about 9.5%. Now in B here, we're gonna find the probability using the actual binomial formula. See, this is one that's, it's not so bad to do the calculation because although n is fairly large, we're just calculating a single probability. And so the probability x equals uh, 23, well x in this case, is the combination n choose x, p to the x, times q to the n minus x. And so uh, we're trying to find the probability of 23 heads. So we threw the coin 50 times, x is 23, p is 0.5, so 23 here for the uh, exponent on the, on the uh, 0.5, and then 50 minus 23 is the exponent on the, uh, this is actually the 23 heads, this would be the 27 tails. And so that's the calculation, and so we get 0 0.096, so 0.9.6%, 9.5%, they're pretty close, okay? So it's a pretty good approximation of the uh, actual probability. So it's, you know, a tenth of a percent difference, basically. So it's pretty close. Uh, see here, find the probability of getting between 18 and 26 heads. And I do have uh, the diagram here, so I don't draw it. So between 18 and 26, so we want everything from this bar all the way up to including this bar. And this bar we want to include from the, the bottom of the bar, which would be at 17.5, to the top of this bar right here, which would be at 26.5. So we want everything from that point to that point. So we want that whole probability. So we need to find the Z scores for 17.5 and 26.5. And so here's our Z score formula. Uh, so we're going to do 17.5 first. So 17.5 minus, remember the mean was 25 on the last page and the standard deviation was 3.54. So we get a Z score of negative 2.12. And then we got to do the 26.5 as well. So here's 26.5, and we get a Z score of 0 0.42. Now we're talking about between here and here. So it's greater than negative 2.12, that's the uh, Z score value associated with this, and less than the 0 0.42, the Z score is associated with the 26.5. And so we need to find those in the table. So the 0 0.42 would be 0.6628 and the uh, negative 2.12, negative 2.1 and then the 0 0.2 column is 0 0.0170. So those are the probabilities that we're, uh, we're subtracting here to get the probability between here and here which is 0.6458, so about a 65% chance of getting between 18 and 26 heads. So that's the end of the binomial part of the approximation. On this page, we're going to start talking about the hypergeometric a little bit, and then a couple of pages of examples. Uh, the normal approximation to the hypergeometric, uh, the test is quite different. 
uh, the uh, n value, uh, the remember the sample size, if it is, the test is, if it's less than one-tenth of the number in the population, that's what capital N, capital P stands for, then the approximation is good. Okay, so there's only one part to the test, there aren't two parts like the binomial. And then this is how you calculate the mean and the standard deviation. Uh, this formula is actually very similar to the expected value for the hypergeometric. The only problem with the textbook that I use here, I use the same terminology, is, is n, our n has a different value in these two formulas, unfortunately, and I'll explain that as we do the example a little bit. So example number two. Uh, a hat has 55 red chips and 35 yellow chips. Okay, so there's 90 altogether. Use the normal approximation to the hypergeometric to calculate the probability of selecting less than three red chips if you take eight out of the hat. So eight's the sample size, and we're, we're talking about less than three. So here's the test, first of all. So n is less than one-tenth of the population. Less than one-tenth of the population. So n is eight here. And it is less than one-tenth of 90. The population would be there's 90 chips. So one-tenth of 90 is 9. So it is slightly less. So the approximation is OK to use. So the mu equals NP. And so N is 8 here because we're taking 8 chips out. And see, the probability of success, we're talking about red chips here. So there's 55 red chips. and uh, there are 90 altogether. So you see the, the probability of selecting a red chip would be 55 out of 90. So that's the, that's the P. And it is very similar to, um, I'm just going to backtrack a second here. It is very, it is very similar to this formula because the, uh, the A over N would actually be the probability. So let's go back here. And so uh, if we calculate that, we get 4.89, so almost 4.9 is the mean. And then we need the standard deviation, too. So here's that big honking formula here. So it kind of looks like the binomial bit, but there's this other part to it. Uh, so we do the, the uh, NPQ. There's the whole thing. So N is 8 because there are 8 chips taken out. The probability of success of getting a red one is 55 over 90, so the probability of a failure would be 35 over 90. So you notice those are the red and yellow numbers. And then the number and the population is 90 minus, we're taking 8 out, over 90 minus 1 in the bottom here. So that's where all those values come from. And so if you do that whole calculation, you should get 1.32 for the standard deviation. So um, now we need to, we're talking about the probability of less than 3. See, that point right there, we need the z-score formula, that point right there would be 2.5. So we're talking about 2.5 and below, which would actually be the 2 interval, the 2 bar, and the 1, and the 0. You could get 0 as well. So you need to find the z-score of 2.5. So 2.5 minus the 4.89 minus divided by the 1.32. So we get a z-score of negative 1.81. So negative 1.81 would be this value here. So that's the probability we're looking for. About 3.5%. And uh, one more uh, example here, the last page. Calculate the probability you draw more than six red chips. So here's my a little bit of my histograms. Here's six, so we're talking about more than six on this side. So more than six. So here's my z-score formula. More than six, we want it from this point up. So that would actually be 6.5, because this is the seven bar right here. So you need to calculate the z-score of 6.5. So we go 6.5 minus that mean from the previous page and divide by the standard deviation to 1.32, and we get 1.22 for the z-score. So we want now we want the probability drawing more than six red chips. So we found the z-score of 6.5 is 1.22. So we want the probability z is greater than 1.22. Now remember, this the standard normal table just gives you z-score uh, probabilities below a certain z-score. So if you want the above, you have to subtract the number you're looking at in the table from 1. Because this is actually what the table gives you. It's less than, so we 1 minus that to get the probability is bigger than 1. And so we look up 1.22. 
1.22 right here is 0.8888, lots of 8s there. And so it's 1 minus the 0.8888, which is uh, 0 0.1112. So that's the probability. Now that's the normal approximation. Uh, just to show you how close it is to the actual uh, hypergeometric calculation, and lots of combinations here. So uh, less than three would be, uh, sorry, sorry, that was the previous one. Greater than six would be either seven or eight. Remember, we only took eight out, so eight's the biggest number you can get. So greater than six would be calculating the probability that seven uh, or seven red chips are drawn or eight red chips, they're, they're all red. So these are the two calculations uh, using the actual hypergeometric uh, uh, formula. And uh, here's my image from my graph and calculator to show you that it works out to very close to this. So this is about 11.1%. The actual calculation here is 10.7. So 10.7%, 11.1%, they are pretty close. Okay. They're not as close as maybe some of the earlier binomial ones because if you remember the test, it was 8 was less than 9, so it's pretty close to the, the borderline of when the test is good. That's why it's not quite as close, but it's still a pretty decent approximation. And that's the end of the tutorial.